Hi everyone, and welcome fellow Dragonborn. Today's video is a Skyrim Anniversary Edition guide on all pets and where to find them. There are a total of 10 pets to collect throughout Skyrim, from the cute, to the creepy, and the crawly, to the downright weird. But I think it's fair to say that all of them are loyal to a fault, and make excellent travel companions, if nothing else. Most pets even come with a unique action or effect that you can command them to perform. We'll be covering these as part of the guide to see how these can be used to your advantage when adventuring through the dimly lit dungeons and treacherous tundras of Skyrim. Another plus point is that most of these cuddly critters are very easy to obtain, if you know where to look and know how to follow a quest marker. It's also worth a mention that it's impossible to lose your pet. With the acquisition of each pet comes a permanent teleport pet spell to summon them to your location. Also, pets don't engage in combat, which is kind of disappointing, but this also means they cannot be damaged or killed. Before we get into the guide, I'd just like to mention that I've got loads more Skyrim guides planned, all featuring Anniversary Edition content. So, if you're a fan of my content or have found this video useful or entertaining, please like this video, leave a comment to tell me what you thought, and please subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with the latest content. Now, let's find some pets. A great place to start your pet collection is in Whiterun in the Bannered Mare. Find and read the For Sale note at the end of the bar to start the quest, Pets of Skyrim. The note advertises a goat for sale in Rorikstead. Head over to Rorikstead, speak with Halvar, who is more than willing to of part course. with Hilda for a very reasonable sum. For that price? Sure. Say hi to Hilda to claim your first pet. Please make sure you read the note found nearby on the floor to find out more about Hilda. But the real reason for reading this note is to trigger the additional quest objectives to seek out a tamed rabbit, skeever, spider, and fox. As far as I can tell, Hilda doesn't have any unique pet abilities, perhaps with the exception of being a sturdy four-legged carry bag who can climb stairs like the best of them. Next up is Sweet Roll the Fox, who was found in the wilderness of Falkreath a little south of Half Moon Mill. After a short round down into the woods, you'll find Sweet Roll waiting patiently next to the corpse of a thief, presumably her previous owner. Pilfer his pockets and read his journal to learn that Sweet Roll is named that for a reason. It's a good thing this thief stocked up before his untimely death. Swipe a Sweet Roll, or five, from his inventory and give one to the fox. As we all know, the way to a fox's heart is through its stomach. Sweet Roll's unique ability is to search for valuables like chests and items that are lying around. Definitely useful for a thief. However, not so useful in the middle of Whiterun. Next on the list is Thistle the Rabbit, who lives in the Garden of the Alchemist Shack south of Iverstead. Hop the fence to find Thistle grazing in the garden. Much like Sweet Roll, Thistle is tamed with treats. If it wasn't already obvious as to what a rabbit might want to munch on, there are some notes inside the shack that helpfully inform you that rabbits like carrots. Fortunately for you, there are some carrots in the crate in the garden that Thistle will happily snack on. And just like that, you've befriended Thistle. Thistle's unique ability is to search for ingredients on command, very fitting for an alchemist's pet. Once instructed, she'll hop over to the nearest bush, barnacle or shrub to let you know where you can pick a plant or trim a tree. We gave her an easy first test. Next stop is Thrifton to search for Scritch the Skeever. Head to the ratway beneath the city and wade through the muck until you reach this ghost. And Scritch locked in a cage in the corner. You'll need to find the key to unlock the cage and free Scritch. Head up the stairs on the right, straight through the next room and into the final room to find a deceased pickpocket lying on the left as you enter. Pick the pickpocket's pockets and loot the skeever cage key. Head back to the cage and free Scritch from captivity. He is now yours to command. Scritch's unique ability is that he can search for food. 
On command, he'll sprint right over to the nearest satisfying snack. So if you need something for a special meal this evening, or if you're the kind of dragon board who just likes to hoard wheels of cheese, Scritch is the pet for you. The final pet in this quest is Arachnia the Spider, located in East March, east of the Mixwater Mill, in Kronvanga Cave. The huge spiderwebs and eggs are hard to miss. Inside, you'll have to whack a bunch of web slingers, then find a button on the north wall of the same room to open a secret door. Next, storm the shack inside the cave and bloody up some vampires. Head behind the shack to find Arachnia inside a cage. Loot the key from the vampire naturalist you murdered earlier, and use it to free the poor thing. This eight-legged blue beauty is now yours. Arachnia's unique ability is probably the coolest so far. She can lay web traps on the floor where she's standing. This ensnares smaller enemies who are foolish enough to step in it, causing an effect similar to paralysis. Larger enemies become staggered repeatedly when they come into contact with the web. This ability is definitely suited to a ranged character build like an archer or mage. You can also harvest potent frostbite venom from Arachnia, but you need to wait a while before the next harvest. There are two pets that you can acquire in Skyrim Anniversary Edition linked to the Saints and Seducers questline, quite unique in appearance, called Elytra Nymphs. The first is found in this unmarked location to the northwest of Windhelm. You'll arrive at the Seducers Bandit Camp, where they may or may not be battling a Frost Troll. Either way, join the fight, bash up the bandits, and dispose of their leader. Now that you've got some peace and quiet, explore the camp to find the cage containing the demented Elytra Nymph. You can either pick the Adept Lock, or search the chest within the bandit camp to find the key. Open the cage, be nice to the bug, and they should want to come with you. Say hello to your first nymph of the pair. Nymphs don't seem to have official names in Skyrim, so I called this one Demi. You can find the next nymph at another unmarked location in Whiterun Hold, just west of North Brittleshin Pass. This time you'll arrive at the Saints Bandit Camp. Never should have come here. As you can probably guess, this is basically a repeat of what went down at the Seducers camp. Beat the bandits, find the key, open the cage, and be nice to the bow. You are now the proud owner of the Manic Elytra Nymph. I called this one Manny. The nymphs have two unique abilities, one that they share, and one specific to each nymph. Firstly, you can harvest Mystic Venom from each nymph. This seems to be a similar poison to the Frostbite Spider Venom that you can apply to your weapons. But the most interesting thing about the Nymph Pets is that they each have an activated aura that applies a buff to the Dragonborn for 5 minutes. The Manic Nymph's uplifting aura applies a rally effect and grants increased health and stamina. The Demented Nymph's fierce aura boosts two-handed, one-handed and archery skills by 10 to give you a slight edge in combat. These auras also work on any active followers of the Dragonborn, giving them the same benefits. Both auras can also be active at the same time, and they stack with similar active effects from armour and spells. The only real downside to these auras is the fact that they only last for 5 minutes, so you need to keep applying them, and the nymphs can't apply these whilst you're in combat. Moving on to what is possibly the easiest pet to obtain from the list, it's the Dwarven Mudcrab. First, travel to Understone Keep in Markarth. After you head in, take the first left to approach Kalsalmo at the Dwarven Ruins. Then, Good speak with him Skyrim. and see what he has for take sale. Amongst his wares, he will have the ownership deed for the Mudcrab that you can purchase for a measly amount of gold. Now for the most difficult part of this task, You'll have to go all the way into your inventory and into books to learn the Teleport Mudcrab spell from the spell term you receive. Now that the hard part is over, greet your crabby companion and take him on your next adventure. Sadly, the Mudcrab pet doesn't have any unique ability to show off. However, his Dwemer technology is so advanced that this crab can even walk forwards. 
Our second to last pet to collect is a strange one. The Nyx Hound. For this one, you're going to need to travel to Solstheim. Once you arrive at Raven Rock, fast travel to Tel Mithrin in the southeast of the island. After arriving there, a short run to the northwest will lead you to this unmarked location on the map and a dark elf named Grievous, who wants to tell you about his silk strider. Indulge him in conversation until you eventually get the option to purchase the Nyx Hound stood next to him. The spell tome is now yours, and so is this cockeyed monstrosity. Like the mud crab, the Nyx Hound has no ability to speak of, but he did watch me slay these Ashbourne, and I was glad for the company. And to have a pair of crooked eyes watching my back. And now for the final pet of this guide, and trust me, we've saved the most tedious for last. The Bone Wolf. This is one of the more sought after pets to collect, but it's the only pet in the roster that comes with prerequisite quests. What the I know, but don't worry, I'm here to guide you through it. First, head to Solitude and enter the Blue Palace. Find and speak with Falk Firebeard and tell him you'll clear out you Wolf's Skull Cave. This will start the quest, The Man Who Cried Wolf. Head straight over to, you guessed it, Make your way through the cave, taking out the necromancers and their conjurations. Eventually, you'll make it to Wolfskull Ruins, where some serious necromancy is going down. Slay your way through your foes to reach the top of the tower. Time to crash this party. Bash in their skulls to disrupt the ritual. Once you're done, report back to Falk in the Blue Palace in Solitude and what fill him in on what you've just uncovered. Please tell me you stopped them. This will complete the first part of the quest chain. To trigger the next part of this chain, level up at you. least once That's and wait I'm for a courier. Your hands only. When he shows up, he'll deliver a letter from Falk Firebeard, who is requesting your help once again. Return yes, to Falk, who explains that the spirit of Batema is on the loose and See needs to be stopped. Can tell us what to do next. This will start the quest, The Wolf Queen Awakened. Next, find Steer in the Hall of the Dead in Solitude, who will give you a key to the catacomb. Head into the Temple of the Divines in Solitude and enter the catacombs. Someone's been expecting Vanquish the vampires and dissect the Draugr as you head deeper into the crypt to reach Potema's refuge. Figure out the spinning door puzzle and move further on. You'll eventually reach this chatty vampire who literally holds the key to your success. Loot it off his corpse and use it on the door to gain entry to Potema's Sanctum. In the Sanctum, you'll reach this mass grave. Potema will summon a few Draugr only for them to be slain yet again and return to the pile. Continue and you'll finally come face to face with the Wolf Queen. Roll it out with these bone bags until you've defeated the last one. Only one thing left to do, turn Potema into dust. And grab her skull before heading back to Steer in Solitude. You've returned. Excellent. These things do have a way of working out when people take action. Solitude owes you a debt of gratitude. Finally, speak to Falk again to deliver the good news. We consider you a protector of solitude. Bask in his honeyed words to complete the quest. Looks like After a couple of days, another courier will eventually appear and give you a letter from Bolgir Bearclaw. Reading this will start the quest, Let Sleeping Wolves Lie. Notice the theme? The letter will ask you to find a necromancer and his strange creatures. Head to this unmarked location, just north of the Apprentice Day it very quickly becomes clear that he'd rather be left alone. Pulverise him and his pets before you get palpatine, and make sure that you loot the totem bone and cage key from his corpse. Next, run over to the cage in his camp and speak to the bone wolf to complete the quest. You'll be granted the bone wolf spell and gain his passive effect, bone wolf's revenge. 
This increases all damage to undead by 25% as long as the Bone Wolf is with you. I guess in a way he's kind of like the Bone Wolf version of Blade. And with that, you've now collected all 10 new pets from the Skyrim Anniversary Edition. I'd be really interested to learn what your thoughts are on these pets, which is your favourite, and how you've used their abilities in your gameplay. Particularly if you've come up with any unique character build ideas featuring these pets. So let me know in the comments. All that leaves me to say is that I hope you've enjoyed the video, found it useful, and if you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel for more Skyrim videos coming soon. I'm Diabetes, see you next time.